So I want to talk about the ultimatum game. So, the ultimatum game... or UG. In the ultimatum game, there are two players. And we're going to call them player A and player B. So player A and player B. Now, what happens in this experiment is that the experimenter chooses to endow player A with some amount of money. For example, Y. And Y could be, say, $10. Now, um, in this case, A has a choice to um, make an offer. They're the proposer. They are the person who makes an offer to player B. So what happens when they do that is that A can say to B, here is some amount that I am going to send you as player B. Player B then has an option. And they're going to send S. Player B then has the option either to accept or to reject that offer. So player B has two choices, accept or reject. If player B accepts the offer, then what happens is, so they say back, okay, I will accept your offer. Yay. Okay, tick. And what happens is, B gets to keep S dollars, and A then gets to keep Y minus S dollars. Okay, so B keeps the amount that was sent to them, um, and A gets Y minus S dollars that they then keep. So for example, if A started off with $10 and they sent person B $2, person B keeps the $2, person A gets $8. So 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. Now person B also has the option instead to reject the offer. What happens then if they reject the offer they're saying, no, I do not like your offer, in which case, with that rejection, B gets zero and A gets zero. So in the case of a rejection, player B says to A, I am rejecting your offer. As a consequence of rejecting, B gets zero dollars and A gets zero dollars. So let's think through a little bit of the reasoning about why B might reject some of these offers, or why we might want to think about how this ultimatum game works. To do that, I'm going to use a game tree. So with this game tree, I want to think about two different options that A and B might have. I'm going to make our life slightly easier here, and say A is only going to choose either between a split or an offer of $5 and keeping $5, or a split where they offer um, one dollar to player B and keep nine dollars for themselves. So um, here we're going to say um, offer five. Okay, so S is equal to five. And here it's going to be offer one. In each of those cases then, B can respond. And B has the choice at each point where they can make a decision over here, um, and I'm going to make this slightly easier, I'm just going to say yes if they accept, and no if they reject. So yes, they accept, no if they reject. Okay, so A makes an offer of five dollars, B says yes, then how much money does each of them end up with? B will get $5. A gets 10 minus 5 equal to $5. So what we're seeing there is that um, each player is going to get $5. In the case where um, um, B says no and rejects A's offer, then B gets $0. A gets zero dollars. 
Okay, so that's the case of rejection. Zero, zero. If A makes an offer of one dollar and B says yes, they accept the offer, B then gets one dollar, A gets nine dollars. So nine dollars plus one dollar is ten dollars again. And finally, if A makes an offer of one dollar and B says no and rejects that offer, B gets zero dollars and A gets zero dollars. Okay, so we've got zero, zero as the potential payoffs there. So when we think about this, what's happening? Well, um, A and B are making these choices and they're thinking through what they might do. Now, if B is an entirely self-interested player, B is only caring about how much money they have in this game, then if they contrast the different outcomes they can receive, they're choosing between getting zero over here when saying no and getting one. They only care about some money, one is greater than zero, they're gonna say yes if A makes an offer of one dollar. Similarly, if um, uh, B is self-interested and only cares about money and they're choosing between zero and five dollars, um, five dollars is greater than zero dollars, in this case they're going to again choose to say yes, they're going to accept the offer of five dollars. A, knowing what B will do, then has to choose between making an offer of $5 and making an offer of $1. A then has to choose between getting $5 and $9. What does A prefer? A prefers the $9 to the $5. What are they then going to do? They're going to then choose to offer $1 to B in the expectation that B will accept that offer. But here's the problem. Many players in the position of player B are not entirely self-interested. They also care about the way in which they're treated by A. So what you want to think about here is, with player A and player B, if A made the offer of $1 and B were self-interested and said yes, then sure, A would get 9, B would get 1. But many people in the position of player B are in fact fair-minded. They're worried about the way in which they're treated by player A. And they think that an offer of only $1 with A having, been got, having gotten $10 is in fact unfair. Many players in the position of player B will choose to reject an offer of $1 and rather get $0 if they are reciprocal or fair-minded. Whereas, if they were offered $5, they would accept the $5. They think that's a fair offer and would accept the offer of $5 if A made that offer. And so we see here differences in behavior where B, when they're fair-minded or reciprocal, rejects what we would call an unfair offer and accepts what they consider a fair offer. And that's the heart of the ultimatum game. Many players, in fact, choose to reject low offers and they will accept what they consider fair offers. Now, the um, outcomes that I choose here were 9 and 1 and 5 and 5. They're pretty stark and that was on purpose. Now what we could think about here is changing the game a little bit, changing the structure of this game tree such that B maybe got offered two dollars or three dollars or four dollars as the alternative option to five. And then we could think about what B is doing in each of those circumstances. At what point do they choose to accept the offer that B makes, that A makes to them? This choice that A is making um, relative to B is also telling us something about what they anticipate B will do. Do they expect B to be self-interested or do they expect B to be fair-minded or reciprocal? Um, and that's the heart of the ultimatum game. Um, we spoke about this in class and you might remember that Werner Gut and his co-authors were the people who came up with this experiment in the early 1980s.